Site of one of the worst industrial disasters in our nation's history, home to the longest steel span bridge in the Western Hemisphere, and a hotel that once housed the world's longest running poker game. I'm Wayne Worth, and you're watching On the Road in West Virginia, R55 Counties, Fayette County. Long before anyone was playing cards for money, the place that we call Fayette County today was a rugged and isolated wilderness comprised of two mighty rivers and a series of Indian trails and camps. As early as 1671, it is said that Thomas Batts and Robert Fallum, or as what we know as the Batts and Fallum Expedition, explored this region and even wrote about the majestic Kanawha Falls. While the mid to late 1700s also brought white explorers to the area, what we today call Fayette County was predominantly occupied by the Native Americans as their sacred hunting grounds. Of course, these two worlds coming together would cause conflict and lead to a lot of bloodshed and sporadic kidnappings. Just ask Mary Draper Ingalls, who during a Shawnee raid was captured along with her two sons and brought to a Shawnee village in Ohio. Mary, who was pregnant at the time, gave birth upon arriving at the Shawnee village, and after a few weeks in captivity and both of her sons being taken away from her, she escaped back through the New River Gorge and found a cabin and a farm where she sought help and refuge. As for permanent settlement in the region, the 1790s attracted a lot of squatters and religious people of Baptist persuasion to what is today the Anstead area. By 1831, when there was a few more people, or should I say a few more thousand people, Fayette County became official and the first county seat was established in New Haven, which is today called Anstead. Now the American Civil War would make its way to Fayette County as this region would become a strategic buffer zone for occupying the Kanawha Valley. Both the Giles Fayette and Kanawha Turnpike and James River and Kanawha Turnpike were not only vital to bringing people and enhancing the population of Fayette County to around 6,000 by 1860, but control of both of these roads would also be significant to both the Union and Confederate armies. Matter of fact, Fayette County was so important to the Confederate cause that even General Robert E. Lee commanded an army on Sewell Mountain. Believe it or not, Sewell Mountain was also the very place where he would first see his famous horse traveler. As for the war, Fayette County would see some action starting with a couple of skirmishes at Goalie Bridge. It was July of 1861 and the Confederate Army was in control of the Kanawha Valley until the Union forces under the command of General Jacob Cox met up with the Confederates and pushed them east. During the retreat, Confederate General Henry Wise ordered his men to burn down the bridge at Goalie Bridge, shielding them from the Union forces. That following November, Confederate forces under the command of John B. Floyd fired artillery on General Cox's men for a whole week. However, this move was ineffective as Cox's forces drove out Floyd's men. Now in September of 1862, the Union forces were ran out of the Kanawha Valley clear to Ohio after Confederate General William Loring with 5,000 men were decisively victorious at the Battle of Fayetteville. What is strange though is that within a month of occupying the Kanawha Valley, the Confederate Army abandoned the region and headed east to provide support in Virginia. As a result, the Union Army would regain control of the Kanawha Valley region till the end of the war. Post-Civil War Fayette County would see a big industrial boom by way of rail and big coal. The completion of the C&O Railroad in 1873 meant the dawn of the coal industry. Matter of fact, coal was so big here that between the years of 1888 to 1903, Fayette County would be the state's leading coal producer. The coal boom also brought a cultural boom as the demand for workers brought both Eastern and Southern European immigrants and African Americans to the county. As a result of this infusion of diversity to the region, in 1896, Fayette County produced our state's first African American to be elected to the legislature, and in 1942, our nation's first African American state 4-H camp. Now, of course, we can't forget about those boom towns along the New River, especially Thurman. Founded during the 1880s after the coming of the C&O Railroad, Thurman would become a strategic point on the C&O as spur lines from local coal mines would feed into the main line. A huge rail yard, water facilities for steam locomotives, and maintenance shops would keep goods and services coming in and coal rolling out. However, with its isolation and sharp increase in population, Thurman would also be known as the Dodge City of the East. To make a long story short and not too blunt, Thurman was also a town that served the entertainment needs of miners and visitors. It's even been said that the former Dunglen Hotel in town housed a poker game that ran for 14 years, making it the world's longest running poker game. As for Thurman today, it's one of our state's most popular ghost towns. Now the growth and prosperity that the industrial boom brought to Fayette County was definitely amazing. 
Towns like Mount Hope would see their population jump by 2,000 people from 1910 to 1950, and even Smithers on the county's western fringe would have over 2,200 residents in 1940. However, with industry growing at this pace, with little to no government oversight, especially when it came to safety, it would only be a matter of time before a tragedy struck, and it did between the years of 1930 and 1935. Construction on the Hawk's Nest Tunnel began in 1930 as over 3,000 workers, most of them African American, would drill and blast a tunnel to channel water from the New River to a hydroelectric power plant to power a Union Carbide metallurgical plant in nearby Alloy. Sadly, the workers were tunneling through solid silica and the dust destroyed their lungs by way of a disease called silicosis. In the end, an estimated 764 men, including 581 African Americans, died digging the tunnel at Hawk's Nest. Many of the men were buried in unmarked graves. Now the second half of the 20th century would bring a lot of changes to Fayette County as the county's sharp decline in coal production would give birth to a new economic age by way of significant investments in infrastructure and outdoor adventure. U.S. Route 19 becoming a four-lane highway in 1978 from U.S. 60 south to the West Virginia Turnpike would only be the start of connecting the southeastern United States with Fayette County. However, the completion of the New River Gorge Bridge would give this region worldwide attention for years to come. Completed in 1977 and reaching a height of 876 feet from the New River, the New River Gorge Bridge would not only become the longest single arch steel span bridge in the world until 2003, but would also serve as a major link in cutting out 45 minutes of travel time on U.S. Route 19. By 1980, an annual one-day event, or as we call it, Bridge Day, would start, and some of the world's best base jumpers would travel here to literally jump off of this bridge. Believe it or not, Bridge Day is our state's largest one-day festival, drawing crowds of around 80,000. The New River Gorge Bridge is indeed a West Virginia treasure that has brought a positive impact to Fayette County and the region. Now it doesn't stop there as Congress in 1978 established a significant portion of the New River in West Virginia as a national river, both protecting its natural beauty and also paving the way for significant growth in industries involving outdoor adventure. As a result, Fayette County has become a leader in tourism in our state in towns like Oak Hill, which used to be the banking center of Fayette County when coal was king, and yes, where Hank Williams Sr. died, is today the county's most populated town. Even Fayetteville has been deemed as one of our country's coolest small towns. And just down the road a piece in the southern end of the county is the National Boy Scout Jamboree and Scout Reserve. Oh, and we can't forget about Hawks Nest State Park where since Chief Justice John Marshall came to visit in 1812, has been known to have some of the most breathtaking views of the New River anywhere. And yes, my favorite state park, Babcock, where many people, including myself, have experienced some of their happiest West Virginia memories. I'm Wayne Worth, and until next time, always remember what we value and hold important to our lives today came from events that happened yesterday, and it's when we begin to understand the events of yesterday that we fully embrace today, which makes tomorrow become less of a mystery.